Hi everyone welcome back to my channel, today I will explain about Astarte. Astarte is a goddess of many names, with a story that spans many cultures, numerous parts of the world, and almost the whole of human history. Her influence on modern religions is still felt strongly and Astarte's touch can be found in some surprising places. Who is Astarte? Astarte is the goddess of war and, to a lesser extent, the goddess of love and fertility. In Egypt she was thought of as an especially powerful warrior goddess and was also associated with the most powerful war machine of the time, the horse and chariot. She was especially fond of people who were good with horses, as demonstrated by one story where she delighted in the fact that a pharaoh's son was an excellent horseman. Astarte's cult was significant in Egypt, and special obelisks were made for the purpose of worshipping her. She is considered one of the major gods of Egypt. Appearance Astarte is usually shown as a beautiful, naked woman. Often, she wears a set of bull horns on her head, a sign of dominance and power. Many depictions also show her with a set, or even two sets, of wings. It's common for Astarte to be shown with overly round hips, which is associated with motherhood and fertility. Sometimes her body is shown as androgynous, which simply means that it looks neither male nor female. Astarte can also be shown wearing a crown. Because she is considered the mistress of horses by Egyptians, many depictions of her show the goddess on horseback or otherwise in the company of horses. Family. Depending on where in Egypt you asked, Astarte's father was either the sun god Ra, or Ptah, the god of craftsmen. If she is a daughter of Ra it means that she is also the sister of Anat, another war goddess. Astarte is also associated with another daughter of Ra, namely Hathor. Hathor is a goddess of fertility, which is of course an attribute Astarte is also known for. Her consort was Seth, who is, no surprise, a god of war. He is also god of winds, storms, evil, chaos and darkness. It seems that even some goddesses have a soft spot for bad boys. Astarte also had a son, according to the Canaanites, by the name of Horon. Horon was also later officially accepted into Egyptian religion. Origins and History We know very little about Astarte specifically in her Egyptian incarnation but we do know that she is another version of the Mesopotamian goddess Ishtar. Astarte was officially adopted into Egyptian religion during the 18th Egyptian dynasty. As Ishtar, there are quite a few stories about Astarte in the Epic of Gilgamesh. Here, she is shown to be a bit moody and spoiled. In one story, she goes to the gate of the underworld and demands to be let in. Ishtar was all about love and became pretty obsessed with a few men whom she insisted she wanted to marry. Gilgamesh himself told her no, thank you, due to having heard stories about all the other men she had loved and then dumped or hurt in some way. When Ishtar failed to get her own way, she could get pretty nasty about it. She was rather liberal with her demands and curses, and was known for generally throwing her weight around. The problem is that, although Astarte is derived from Ishtar, we can't assume that the Egyptian form of this goddess was anything like Ishtar. Her symbols were the lion, the horse, the sphinx, the dove, and a star within a circle indicating the planet Venus. Pictorial representations often show her naked. She has been known as the deified morning and her evening star. Equivalence the deity takes on many names and forms among different cultures, and according to Canaanite mythology, is one and the same as the Assyro-Babylonian goddess Ishtar, taken from the 3rd millennium BC Sumerian goddess Inanna, the first and primordial goddess of the planet Venus. Inanna was also known by the Aramaic people as the god Adder 
whose myth was construed in a different manner by the people of Greece to align with their own cultural myths and legends, when the Canaanite merchants took the first papyrus from Byblus, the Phoenician city of Gabal, to Greece sometime before the 8th century by a Phoenician called Cadmus the first king of Thebes. In Greece she is known as Aphrodite and was worshipped as a goddess of love. In Egypt Astarte was a warrior goddess paired with Anat. In Phoenicia she is a sister of Asherah and Balat Gabal who are married to their brother El by order of their father Epigeus. The name Astarte is sometimes also applied to her cults in Mesopotamian cultures like Assyria and Babylonia. Ashtoreth is mentioned in the Hebrew Bible as a foreign, non judaite goddess, the principal goddess of the Sidonians or Phoenicians, representing the productive power of nature. In Abrahamic lore she is known as Ashtoreth and is seen by them as a Canaanite fertility goddess as well as a productive power of nature itself. Statues of her would be found throughout Israel with her symbol the crescent moon horns. She is sometimes mistaken for Asherah, but both Ashtoreth and Asherah are different deities even though the two do share the title of Queen of Heaven. She was eventually demonized into the demon Astaroth. She is a counterpart deity to Ishtar and the two are often associated with the other. In the Baal epic of Ugarit, Atharat, the consort of the god El, plays a role. She is clearly distinguished from Ashtar in the Ugaritic documents, although in non-Ugaritic sources from later periods the distinction between the two goddesses can be blurred, either as a result of scribal error or through possible syncretism. In the contest between Horus and Set, these two goddesses appear as daughters of Ra and are given as allies to the god Set, here identified with the Semitic name Baal Hadad. Astarte also was identified with the lioness warrior goddess Sekhmet, but seemingly more often conflated, at least in part, with Isis to judge from the many images found of Astarte suckling a small child. Astarte's father was either the sun god Ra, or Ptah, the god of craftsmen. If she is a daughter of Ra it means that she is also the sister of Anat, another war goddess. Astarte is also associated with another daughter of Ra, namely Hathor. Hathor is a goddess of fertility, which is of course an attribute Astarte is also known for. Her consort was Set, who is, no surprise, a god of war. He is also god of winds, storms, evil, chaos and darkness. It seems that even some goddesses have a soft spot for bad boys. Astarte also had a son, according to the Canaanites, by the name of Horon. Horon was also later officially accepted into Egyptian religion. Some ancient sources assert that in the territory of Sidon the temple of Astarte was sacred to Europa. According to an old Cretan story, Europa was a Phoenician princess whom Zeus, having transformed himself into a white bull, abducted, and carried to Crete. Some scholars claim that the cult of the Minoan snake goddess who is identified with Ariadne, the utterly pure, was similar to the cult of Astarte. Her cult as Aphrodite was transmitted to Cathera and then to Greece. Herodotus wrote that the religious community of Aphrodite originated in Phoenicia and came to Greeks from there. He also wrote about the world's largest temple of Aphrodite, in one of the Phoenician cities. Their names together are the basis for the Aramaic goddess Atargoddess.